Last week, Microsoft released a new build of its Windows 10 operating system. Now, the code's not done yet, but this is a much further along example of what it wants to build. On the desktop side, it's very solid. On the tablet side, still a bit wonky. Let's take a look. Cortana, Microsoft's personal digital assistant, has long had a home in Windows Phone. Now it's also in Windows 10. It's quite cool. You can pull it up by clicking on this little button here, and up it comes. And it has a certain options here, news stories and that sort of thing, political news for me. And in the US news and so forth, you scroll down, it will even list your icons, the weather and so forth. But what's really fun about Cortana is this. Tell me a joke. What kind of underwear do clouds wear? Thunderpants. I never said they were good jokes. Also out in the new Windows 10 build is a revamped start menu. The new start menu is pretty fat if you take a look at it. And it's completely dynamic, of course, as before. You can take the icons and move them around to your own kind of liking. But what's new also is this ability to make it a full screen start menu. Now, I don't have enough icons here to fill this out, but if you were on a tablet, say, in tablet mode, which we'll get to shortly, certainly this would be a fun way to select applications on the go. The mapping application in Windows 10 is really quite lovely. If you take a look over here, we can scroll in, scroll in, scroll in, and bam, TechCrunch. The Maps app is quick and fun to use, and it also ascribes to the design aesthetic that's coming with Windows 10. Microsoft has not released all the parts of Windows 10 yet, but if you know to get around some stuff, you can hack it out. Now, in the current build, the calendar and clock function in the lower right side of the screen is clunky and old and kind of looks lame, but if you do a little registry hack, you get the following. Check this out. So it's redesigned, it's square, it's easy, and as you can tell, it's all accessible with one thumb. That's good for, you know, tablets, say. Also big in the new Windows 10 build is integration with the Xbox ecosystem. Now, Xbox has been a very popular franchise for Microsoft, so it's not surprising they want to get that inside of Windows 10. In the build, there's a brand new Xbox application, as you can see, it's quite pretty, quite responsive. That's everything you want in here. There's games, activities, and of course, all of your Xbox friends. Also included in Windows 10 is the ability to stream Xbox One games to your PC, provided you're on the same network. Now, we haven't had a chance to test this out yet, so we don't know if it's going to be clunky or fast, but certainly, gamers are excited. Key to Windows 10 is the ability to support small screens, large screens, touch screens, and non-touch screens, even computers that can break into two pieces. I have a Surface Pro 3 right here running Windows 10, and when I take off the keyboard, I'm prompted to do something else. It says, do you want to go to tablet mode? I select, why not, sure. And the OS changes, how apps display changes. It becomes very touch friendly and touch focused. Now, this is good because now I have a tablet and I have an OS that understands that and is prioritized for that. But when I go back and plug into my keyboard, as you can see here, the same prompt appears. Do you want to leave tablet mode? I'd like to. And now I'm back in a desktop environment that's been optimized for keyboards and mice. It's kind of a cool way to make sure no matter what you're doing, you have the best possible experience. Why should you care about Windows, which has become a less popular OS over the last couple years? Well, it's, it's pretty simple. Windows 10 brings both smartphones and tablets and desktop PCs and the Xbox and even massive touchscreens together. It's a gambit that you can build one platform and have it work from all sizes. It's, it's really a large bet, and if Microsoft can pull this off and build in cross-device functionality that really brings the units together, it could be compelling. Uh, if you look at Apple, for example, they have OS X on one machine and iOS on the other. They're not the same. Here, they want to do one unified effort. It's audacious. I don't know if they're going to pull it off, but certainly if they can, it can bring Microsoft back in a real way.